Hi, and welcome to another fabulous episode of Thyroid Refresh TV, a podcast dedicated to helping you live a thyroid healthy lifestyle. We're so glad to be back with you again. I'm Dana Bowman. And I'm Jenny Mahar, and we are the dynamic duo behind Thyroid Refresh and Thyroid 30. We are thrilled to be here today with Carly Sweet to talk about setting boundaries. This is going to be such a juicy conversation, you guys. And we're going to talk about how doing so, how setting boundaries can help us protect our health and energy. So welcome, Carly. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks so much for having me, ladies. I'm really honored and very excited to share all about boundaries. Awesome. It is a pretty juicy topic, but before we dive in, I wanted to give a little background for those of you who don't know very much about Carly. She is a self-care coach and author behind the book and digital course, Boundaries with Soul. A great name. After years of people pleasing in the corporate fashion industry in New York City, she finally realized there was more to life than being a chronic yes woman. By practicing transformational self care, she gained more confidence and discovered that by making her needs a priority, real happiness would soon follow. Carly is the host of YouTube, Utime podcast, and her work is featured on major media outlets Mind Body Green, Bustle, Hello Giggles, Elite Daily. She's uh, here with us today, and we couldn't be more excited. Thank you. I'm so excited. <laughs> so I've been really, really excited about this show because, you know, boundaries are one of those things. It's like a hallmark of the of uh, creating a life of personal well-being, getting on the path of wellness, super important for those of us, us with chronic illness. I think important for everyone. And it's one of those things that's like easier said than done. A lot of times it sounds really good in the therapist's office or in the, you know, the Oprah magazine article you're reading. But then when it comes down to the nitty gritty of actually learning to speak up for yourself, make those boundaries and, and, you know, create a, a life that works for you, it can be a little bit tricky, sticky, complicated. Can you tell us about your, can we start with, you know, your story and your self-care transformation? Yeah, absolutely. So I grew up in the Midwest. I grew up in Cincinnati, Ohio, and you might be wondering why that has anything to do with this, but really that Midwest mentality, um, I learned from a very young age, help everyone, you know, always do right by your neighbor bend over backwards for those that you don't even know and welcome everyone with open arms and ask questions later. Yes, 100%. I'm from Michigan, so sorry to jump in there. I get it, 100%. Totally, and even in school as a little kid, you know, and I remember, you know, certain parts of my life where my parents would say, you know, go give them a hug, and I'd say no. And then the other person would say, well, you're making me so sad because you're not hugging me. And as a little kid, like over time we learn, okay, well, if I don't show affection or do something someone else asks, that makes me a bad person because I'm making them sad. And I learned that makes other people sad when I don't do what they ask. So it started at a really young age for me. Um, it's certainly something I still struggle with, people pleasing, and I call myself a recovering people pleaser. And that behavior really followed me throughout college, throughout my time in New York when I was in the fashion industry. I mean, I the turning point for me was I found myself locked in the bathroom stall having a full-blown anxiety attack. And I didn't know at the time what that was. At work? Yeah, at work. And I remember the thoughts going through my mind and it was, why aren't you doing more? Why can't you just get through this, suck it up, like make it happen. Everyone else is doing their jobs. Like, why are you not doing enough? Yeah, rub some dirt on it. Get back yeah, out like, there. Yeah, right? Figure it out, you know, oh, put your big girl panties on. Right. I kind of was a little like I woke up a little bit in that moment but at the same time the voice of my ego was chipping in and saying those not so constructive things to me 
And that was really a huge turning point for me. And I really started to question things a little bit more rather than just being a yes woman. And um, over the, the next year and a half, I started working out with a personal trainer, finally taking care of myself and making time in my day for me. It was an hour at the gym. I hated it to begin with. It was hard. Uh-huh. She pushed me, but it shifted so many other things in my life. And it's not because I was getting stronger and more fit. That was a great side effect, but really it was, I'm worthy enough to set aside time for myself in my day and the world will keep spinning and no one actually really cares as much as I thought they did, <laughs> like that I was taking time for myself. And I quit my corporate job. I enrolled at the Institute for Integrative Nutrition, uh, became a certified coach through their program, went to a school uh, for culinary nutrition, and now I'm deep into this, this role of helping others set boundaries. And that came through working with clients and, and realizing everyone I'm working with is a people pleaser. They, they just innately were, you know, coming to me. And here I am today, author of Boundaries with Soul. Awesome. Wow. That's, I mean, I think you bring up a really good point too, before we move on of that correlation between physical strength and like emotional and spiritual strength. You know, I know when I feel stronger physically and I make the time and effort to do that, I feel it's, it's all, it It clears things out, even just walking. I mean, even if you can't do this full on hour or however long it is with the fitness personal trainer, even just getting out and getting outside and walking, just getting a little yes. sweat in, a little movement in, always shifts things for me. Right. Every time. Yeah. That's what every morning, well, so I'm 15 weeks pregnant today. Oh, and- congratulations. Oh, you look so glowing. I oh, love it. It might be sweat. I don't know. <laughs> um, but, but yes, the walking, I mean, that's what I, all I could do some days and getting out and walking, it, it makes such a difference. You get the blood flowing, you get the endorphins going and just the worries kind of just melt away a little bit. Well, it's about, you know, I think we talk a lot about the path shifting from a path of illness to a path of wellness and the path of wellness is multifaceted. It's your whole life. Mm-hmm. You know, it's, are you in a job that's right for you? How are your relationships? How's your emotional health, your mental health, your physical health? Are you exercising? Are you eating right? I mean, it's a lot of balls to juggle, but you know, it is worth it. That work is so worthwhile when we can, you know, try to address all those different facets of our life. I wanted to ask you, you know, of course we, we are part of a, thyroid disease audience, right? Everybody who comes to thyroid refresh has some type of thyroid issue. Do you feel, and a lot of those thyroid issues, these are chronic illnesses, a lot of autoimmune disease like um, Hashimoto's or Graves disease. Do you feel that a lack of boundaries can be linked to chronic illness? Absolutely. 100%. You know, for me, I, I don't, I don't have chronic illness, but when I was a chronic people pleaser, I experienced itchy patches on my eyelids, dry patches on my face. I was so bloated all the time. I thought it was normal to take gas X after every meal. I couldn't sleep. And I realized my emotional habits were affecting my physical body. So I have no doubt that a lack of boundaries can perpetuate or, you know, even trigger a chronic illness. And when I was in um, studying under the Institute for Integrative Nutrition, I'll never forget one of the seminars was about how women with thyroid disease often don't use their voice enough and their disease will manifest in the area that's being underutilized. Mm -hmm. It's like a muscle. If you, you have to get it moving, you have to to, to get the blood flowing there. And if you're not speaking what's on your mind and just holding all of this trapped, possibly toxic emotion in that area, it's just going to build and build and build. Mm-hmm. 
Yes, that's a very common story we hear. That's why I'm wearing my um, lapis necklace oh. and some lapis beads. And I just, I saw them at this crystal shop that I like. And I was like, you know, when your gut just says you, you need that. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I pretty much got home and tied a, them in a knot around my neck and they're good for, you know, truth, helping you speak your truth and confidence. This is like a stone that, you know, royalty used to wear in on all the, um, it was on King Tut's sarcophagus, a whole oh. bunch of lapis, you know, this is like, anyway, not to get on a, a crystal tangent, but <laughs> yes. Speaking your truth, so important for us. We have a bunch of articles on Thyroid Refresh about that. And it's one of those things that I think like setting boundaries does take practice and can be um, counter to our, you know, our natural inclinations. So we sort of have to break our own mold that way to speak our truth and to make those boundaries. And this is one of those things I think that really, it sounds great and everybody's like, yeah, yeah, boundaries, let's do it. <laughs> but then when it comes time to make them, it can feel really difficult and awkward and uncomfortable. Can you give us some practical tips for those of us to whom boundaries do not come naturally? Yeah. It's one, the, it's one of those things, it's easier said than done almost, right? I mean, it's, oh. it's, it's, it's it sounds kind of easy. Okay. I'm going to make some batteries and then you get in it and it's a little stickier, a little harder. So we'd love some yeah. tips. There are so many layers when it comes to setting boundaries and why we don't set them, why we feel guilty setting them, why they don't exist in our lives in the first place. And you know, it's, well, to preface this, I should say, I talk about in my book, the two different types of boundaries, the internal and the external boundaries. And the external boundaries, those are boundaries you're setting with others. So no, that will not work for me. I'm, I have too much on my plate. I can't take that on right now. But the internal boundaries, those are boundaries like committing to working out, eating better, setting those those limits and those expectations for your own personal behavior. So sometimes it's, it's easier to start with those internal boundaries. Sometimes it's easier to start with the external boundaries. It kind of just depends who you are and what you're more comfortable with. Sometimes, I mean, everyone's different in that, in that regard, but there are two different types of boundaries that I, I do like to touch on. Um, and they're both equally as important. And, if boundaries seem like, oh yeah, that's the answer, that's going to change it all, that's, that's my end all be all, here's, here's what I need to do. Okay, now what? <laughs> uh, so always start really small. So that might look like setting an internal boundary. Okay, well, I'm going to put my phone down by 9 p.m. every night. That's a boundary. It might not feel like it. You're not telling someone no in an active sense, but you're setting a boundary with your personal energy and your own time. And you're saying no to your technology. You're saying no to social media, whatever it is. And aside from starting small, you can also clue other people into what you're trying to practice. And this is not something that Seems like it would be a natural step to setting boundaries, but it's really important, I think, especially um, for those closest to us in life that are deserving of our explanation. Not everyone is deserving of your no explanation, but when I set a boundary with my husband, it sounds a lot different than setting a boundary with a random stranger. Setting a boundary with my husband requires me to say, I'm doing this because I still love you and backing it up. And sometimes that makes setting the boundary feel a little more accessible because we're able to express, I'm still coming from a good place. I still love you. I still care for you. This is for me. So that kind of takes the edge off of saying like, no, not going to work for me. If that, if that helps. Oh, so much. Mm-hmm. Yes. I mean, just the internal versus external. I think that's a great starting point for people. Yeah. yeah. Especially with technology because we're so accessible. So, hmm. accessible. You know, do, <laughs> do we 
really need to be responding to emails at midnight. I mean, guilty, but <laughs> I don't know how many times I've said, why did I do that? I should have just left my phone and not looked at it before bed, you know? Yeah, it's so true. And I've, I've gotten in the habit of, I sleep with my phone downstairs and, you know, by the time our kid comes, I know that will be probably a different story. Um, but I sleep with my phone downstairs. I don't check my email. Hence why I missed our meeting location. <laughs> I don't check my email until I sit down at my computer. Um, I really try to disconnect as much as possible from the evening hours to the morning hours. And it makes a huge difference for me. Mm. I love too the idea of, you know, you don't always have to explain. You don't have to walk around with a sign saying, I'm taking better care of myself, everyone. But yes, there are those intimate relationships in our life that and making that differentiation between is this deserving of my no explanation or do I just get to own this for me? Yep. And saying no sometimes, you know, as a people pleaser isn't very easy, especially when it's someone who doesn't deserve the explanation. But you still have that sense of who you are and you're kind and you want to make it easy and not bad for them when you say no. So you so you say no, like, you know, right, you know, and, and that's not an easy thing to do. Totally. And I think that sometimes saying no to strangers or, you know, close, like loose acquaintances right. can sometimes be the hardest. Right. And Mm. Like, cause I can tell my parents no, I can tell my husband no till the cows come home, you know, my siblings, whatever it is. But sometimes those, those like new friends or people were like, not trying to win over, but like, we're trying to make a good impression. Mm -hmm. Like, oh gosh, how do I, how do I say no? <laughs> so there are some important things to remember is that one, you are inherently worthy of saying no. It doesn't matter who it is what you're saying no to, that is your right to have a choice to make a decision. And the other thing is, I always encourage my clients to really think about, is there a temporary moment of discomfort where they're told no, more important than my long-term happiness? And that's really what you're giving up when you say yes to something that isn't of service to you or zaps your time or your energy that's so precious already. You're saying that whatever they're asking for is more important than what I will gain when I say no. Mm. Mm. I love that. Mm -hmm. Well, I think too, it seems like sometimes we need to make boundaries with ourselves like the parts of ourselves that want to like sabotage our well-being like the parts of ourselves that have FOMO you know fear of missing out so I'm going to say yes to every single invitation I get until my calendar is completely insane I'm exhausted I'm not enjoying anything I have no personal time you know what I mean I, I think a lot of people do that like can you talk about that a little bit and oh yeah yeah Absolutely. With ourselves. Yes. And there was a time in my life where I was that person saying yes to everything. I was spending money that I wasn't comfortable spending money with because I was going out to dinners or shows or whatever it was. And I was exhausted. I ended up resenting a lot of the people I was with because I felt like you're making me do this. Like, ugh. But in reality, that was an active decision I made. And it was my lack of boundaries within myself and with others that got me into this mess in the first place. And I remember a time when I was living in New York City, I was like 20, I lived in New York from when I was 22 to 26. So it was a very, you know, I was learning a lot about myself then. And I wanted to stay in so desperately on a Friday night. And I just remember this thought that crossed my mind was, why are you so antisocial? Why don't you want to go out? Everyone else is going out. Like, just, just suck it up and go out. 
And I convinced myself, my ego drove me to believe that I would be antisocial if I didn't say yes and show up to whatever it was. And here's the thing. When we say yes to every invitation that comes our way, we're only showing up with a percentage of ourself. And when we actually pick and choose what's, I say, an authentic yes for us and decline with a loving no, which is what I call no's, um, we give ourselves the chance to show up as the best version of ourselves to those that we are you know, hanging out with or going out to dinner with or whatever it is, instead of, you know, dragging along this like shell of a being that's broken and tired and just wants to be at home on the couch. And who would you rather hang out with? Right? right. Yeah, I know. I you use that too when you said a loving no, because that's a, that's a, a good thing to remember when you're about to say no to somebody. <clears throat> Think of it as your loving no. Yeah. And maybe comes out easier. Totally. Totally. A wise friend once told me something that I've never forgotten. And that's that when you say yes to something, it means saying no to a whole group of other things. And when you say no to something, it also means, you know, the inverse, you're saying yes to a whole bunch of other things. So maybe you're saying no to going out on a Friday night. Maybe it even requires backing out of some plans, but you're also saying yes to I'm giving myself what I really need. Maybe what I really need tonight is a bath. I had a really long week. And if I do this, I'm going to refill my bucket. I'm going to have a much better weekend. It's better for my overall health, you know? It's so yeah. true. It's so true. And, you know, the, the backing out of plans is so, that's usually a sign that like, people always ask me, they're like, how do I know if I'm a people pleaser or like, committing to too much and I'm like how many white lies have you told in the past month and they're like oh <laughs> <laughs> uh, like excuses for getting out of things right, yeah. right. Yeah. yes yeah so do you think generally speaking boundaries are more difficult for women to make absolutely I really do I think in our society today and for the past you know, centuries, women are caretakers. We are natural givers. We are expected to be in that role of, of giving, giving, giving always to others before ourselves. And you know, as I'm transitioning into this role of motherhood, I've had so many unsolicited opinions and you know, adv- pieces of advice. And people are like, well, your work's totally going to change when you're mother. And I'm like, you know what? Maybe it is. And maybe it's not. Maybe it will just further solidify what I truly believe in. And, you know, I think that women as these caretakers, as these, whether you are a mother or not, it's something innate within us at times that to fix, to feel, to overgive, that's just sometimes part of our being and it feels really overwhelming at times um and we feel really really crappy when when we turn it off sometimes but then we get used to it and realize it's okay (laughs) right yeah I always think about like there is a shadow side of compassion there is a shadow side of empathy and altruism you know where those things are good unt- until the point, I think, where we start harming ourselves. Exactly. Exactly. And finding that balance between, yes, giving and being, being there for others and helping others, but also to what, to what extent. Mm-hmm. And I always, you know, try to have the mindset of, I will whether it's my husband or my dogs or whatever, I will always support you and help you until it starts to impact my own personal health and well-being. Mm -hmm. Because at that moment, then I need to reassess where am I giving too much? Why am I giving? Why am I feeling like I have to give too much? And, you know, is that person are they going to flounder if I take a step back and care for myself? No, I'm giving them a chance to learn to care for themselves instead of me being like, let me fix it for you. 
Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Such a good point. Mm -hmm. I wanted to bring up this you know, really juicy topic we kind of chatted about before the show. And I think this is an, a really important but not talked about aspect of what we call the healing journey. Um, sometimes when we're making boundaries, people can take it really personally. And I think it's like when a person maybe hasn't come to that place in their lives yet of personal accountability, your boundary setting can feel very threatening to them. And I think it's one of those things that can be a, a difficult surprise for people who have stepped into this, you know, I am the CEO of my life and my well-being. I am, you know, taking control of my life. I'm going to learn to set boundaries. I'm going to take better care of myself. And then sometimes these people, sometimes people very close to us, even our immediate family members can be threatened by this and, and almost kind of resent you for it. And yeah. you know, thinking about this, Carly, when I saw um, your, you sent out an email that showed your photo transformation of, you know, from the beginning of your journey to now. And it's like, this is real. This is, your, this is Carly's journey from full blown people pleaser to, you know, more enlightened, empowered individual who's, you know, <laughs> better off and healthier in every way because of it. And that success and glow that comes from deep inside that it's so visible and undeniable. So I wanted to ask you, have you encountered that? Have you encountered that like resistance from people and how do you deal with that? That, kind of difficult and, you know, challenge of the hard earned success. Cause you're working really hard doing this, right? You want yeah. the people you love to cheer you on. Yep. They don't always. They don't, they don't. And Oh, I have goosebumps as you're talking about this. You know, I have a really close personal story with this. When I decided to move from New York city, I live outside of Seattle now. And when I decided to make that move, and I told my mom, my parents are divorced and my mom lives, you know, in the Midwest, in Kentucky, well, South, and my dad lives in Washington state. And I told my mom, we're moving to Seattle. And she didn't talk to me for about a week because she was so hurt. And that was really hard for me. I'm extremely close with my mother and there were moments where I started second guessing myself. Oh my gosh, what am I doing? I'm such a bad person. Why would I do this to her? She's never going to talk to me again. Oh, I'm so terrible. What am I thinking? Did I make a mistake? All of these things that come up. And I had to really take a step back and ch check myself and say, I'm doing this. I'm making this move because this will improve my life. I'm doing this because I need to be closer to nature because this marks off and checks off my needs as a human. And m moving forward with that mindset of I'm doing what's best for me right now in this moment. Yes, it's a huge life change. And yes, you can be so mad at me. But feeling that that moment of recommitting to my boundary I set with her of I'm doing this and realizing She's not going to hate me forever. Maybe some people will hate you forever. And is it so bad to cut that toxic person out of your life if someone really will to just not, not honor your boundaries and just hold that over you for the rest of your life? Is it so bad? It might be painful. It feels like they're saying, yeah. I don't really care what you need. Exactly. I just care about what I want. What and you provide for me. And I have a, I have a personal story. <clears throat> that I just want to share because I, yeah. I just realized something. Of course, I know Jenny knows this, but I picked up and moved from Texas with my family to Costa Rica in 2008. We were there for eight years and I didn't realize. So until you said what you were saying, it kind of hit me. Um, I didn't know why I was moving. I just felt the pull. Yep. Later I realized I needed to be closer to nature. I needed to be away from all of that. I need, those things came later. So it felt really terrible because I didn't really, it was just like, I need to leave you. <laughs> and, and sometimes you have to listen to your gut. Yep. So, 
So sometimes your gut is really, you know, they say, listen to your gut, right? Your intuition. I did do that, but sometimes people don't do that. And so it's one of those things you kind of have to clue into. And also I felt selfish and they said it was very selfish of me. And now I'm thinking to myself when you just said that, so, so what? I haven't ever thought of that before. So thank you because yes, I still was holding on to that. Yeah. I didn't. I, yeah, it was selfish. And you know what? I think, <laughs> I mean, okay. Yeah. Okay. Like, so be it. So what? I made a decision for my happiness. Like, oh, <laughs> right? we right? get so, we get so worried and concerned about what others are going to think or judge us on or what their response will be. Who cares? It's actually none of your business what other people think of you. And I also, I want to bring up a really important point with this is often when we are setting boundaries and we trigger someone else, it rarely has to do with what we are actually doing. It usually has to do with how it makes that person feel mm -hmm. and how it takes away from their own sense of security. So for my mom in that example, it was, it wasn't that I was moving across the country. It was that I was choosing to go somewhere where my dad is. And that triggered maybe a fear in her of I'm losing her. Oh my gosh, you know, whatever it is, like, you know, I can only speculate, but it rarely has to do with the action itself. It's what's making them feel insecure or triggering a fear or how you're disrupting their pattern. Mm -hmm. That is yes. so 100% yeah. right on the nose. And so much of, I mean, this that can be said about criticism and judgment in general. It's uh -huh. relative to the person who's giving it. It's not your stuff. Yeah, exactly. It's their stuff let them own it. I think that can be helpful in us coming quicker to forgiveness mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. around that and saying that belongs to them. I'm not going to take it on. I know this is the right choice for me and mm -hmm. this is my life and I was unhappy there and I'm happy you're here. And that's just, I can't help it. Yep. It is <laughs> I can't help it. Life and be okay. Yeah. Right. right? There's a really great book um, by Byron Katie called Loving What Is. And are you familiar? Oh, yes. Yeah. yeah. I'm a fan of Byron Katie. Yeah. And just the idea of your business, their business, and she says God's business. I call it the universe's business. That concept changed my life. Absolutely. Same. Like, high five, sister. I live by those words. And yes. what, this is something I, I learned from a therapist, and she, you know, was being pulled in many different directions and she said come back to you what is your business in this don't talk about how somebody else feels and what somebody else needs and how somebody else is being what are what do you need how do you feel how are you behaving that's your business that's and when you speak from that place too i think this can be helpful in making boundaries this is something that i kind of use personally is when I may have to have the conversation with someone, I try to think about what is my business in this? Because that can be easier for them to hear than, look, I know you're gonna be upset because you feel this way and you don't want me to la 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 la. It's, I'm really not okay here and I have to make a change because it's yep. making me unwell. Yep. And, and this is going to give me what I need and that's your business. And then, of course, you know, God's business or the universe's business is things like hurricanes and flash floods and traffic. <laughs> traffic. traffic. That we have no control over. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. It's so true. It's so true. And it's like a permission slip to just like let go of the things that we really can't control. And my husband and I were in therapy for maybe about six months after we got married and just because of communication things. And one of the huge, you know, men and women communication, that's a whole other topic, but um, <laughs> that's another show. Yeah. yeah that's, a, that's another show, maybe a series. Mm -hmm. um, some, a really big relevation that we had was 
for me personally as a people pleaser getting into his business all of the time do this you should do that oh la, la. like all these things that I think of that I verbalize because I think it's coming from a loving place. Well, really I'm taking his power away to step up, to make a decision, to prove to me that he's worthy to be his best self. I'm jeopardizing that opportunity for him and really learning that and being like, Oh, Whoa, I am coming at this compassion thing from a totally backwards angle and that was huge. And I always come back to your business, their business, and the universe's business. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so helpful. Yeah, and I, you know, my husband is a fixer, right? And he'll want to like, well, I'm going to do this because I think this is what you need to. Yes. No, no, it, that's helpful there too. I appreciate that. But you worry about you. You need to trust me to take care yes. of me. Oh, I ask me to know what I need. You don't need to fix it for me. Were you in our house yesterday? We literally just had this conversation. <laughs> and so my husband and I, we started something where, I don't know, he must have read it somewhere, but it was in these moments where I'm getting flustered, probably not communicating, like, you're frustrating me. And he'll say, okay, do you need me to fix it or feel it? And I'm like, just oh, feel it. I love that. I love that. Yeah. yeah. You need to fix it or feel, feel it. it. Well, yeah. and one of my favorite things that I, that I just watched um, on the Netflix series for Brene Brown was the story that's going on in my head is this. Yes. That was so profound. If you haven't seen it, you've got to watch it because I was thinking to myself, his story and her story, totally two different things. Who knew? Who, Who knew? knew? Yeah. Right. Seriously. <laughs> It's so true. And that was something that therapy really helps me discover was, I mean, it seems so simple when we talk about it, right? Like, oh, you mean when I say something, he could, can, he receives it in a different way based off of his past experiences? Mm -hmm. What? Right. right. Mind -blowing. Mind -blowing. <laughs> Do I need to fix it? Do I need to feel it? Or the story going on in my head is this. I love it. Mm -hmm. Right? Because we need that. And they're we're so, simple tools. Yeah. We're so lucky to have these people, you know, like Brene Brown and Byron Katie and, and Carly Sweet. Sweet. Yeah. Oh, honored. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Excuse me. I have one more question for you. Yeah. So kind of going back to, you talked about how sometimes it can be hardest to make boundaries with the acquaintances. Maybe it's a coworker, right? Mm -hmm. And I think we've all been there where, maybe we've tried to make a boundary and then somebody goes, oh, well, you know, must be nice for you. Or they make some kind of little yucky remark or backhanded compliment or, you know, just straight up insult or whatever it is. In that moment, do you have any tips for how we can move through Navigate. instances with grace? Yes. Yeah, absolutely. You know, in those moments, first of all, this might not be the answer you're expecting, but disarm them with vulnerability mm. and say, yeah, it is nice, but you know what? It's also been really tough for me. So I'm working on it and I'm, I'm really trying hard. What's someone going to say to that? They're going to be like, oh, oh, good for you. Yeah. Yeah. You know, this and isn't about you, I'm not trying to yep. hurt you, insult you, yep. attack you. I'm, I'm just doing me here. Doing my best here. Yeah. yeah. Just doing my best. Just you know, doing my best. Being vulnerable about the path to setting boundaries and the act of setting boundaries is, it's a way to, first of all, get back in touch with what, what you're feeling in that moment, right? But also, like I said, kind of disarm people. They're not expecting you to open up about your journey. And if they're not deserving of your openness, then obviously do not, do not share. But if it's a moment where you're like, kind of a little rub the wrong way if someone makes a snide comment, you know, get a little forceful and say, yeah, you know, it is great for me, but it's also really hard and it's a practice and something I'm working on. Yeah. And smile and walk away. <laughs> right. That's it. That too, right? That's it. You know, 
come from a place of kindness, but also come from a place of like guarded kindness. Yeah. And, um, you know, give them, give them a little sense of your vulnerability. I think that shows a lot of strength. Hmm. Well, um, I'm thinking of another episode where we talked with Heather Dane, who was the, uh, she was one of um, Louise Hayes, like personal spiritual advisors. Wow. Incredible conversation, Carly. You'd love it. And for anybody listening, if you've enjoyed this conversation, I think that would also be a great addendum to this one. Uh Because she talked about, you know, she was in the corporate world and saying yes to everything and you know her lights going out her her buckets empty she's exhausted she's sick you know she had auto serious autoimmune issues and she started to take back her her power power by like she would you know diffuse essential oils in her office she would make a point at lunch that i'm not going to work through lunch i'm going to go for a walk i'm going to get outside in the fresh air I'm not going to stay until 8 p.m. You know, I, I'm sick. I need to go home at 5 o'clock. Yeah. My, my regularly scheduled work day, I'm going to honor those hours. And she said the crazy thing was her productivity increased. Increased. And her hours went down and her productivity. Hours went down. And her totally boss was did. like, show me what how you're doing, you're doing this. Show me the money. <laughs> Right? Show me right? how you did this. Well, and it, it's Midwest, it's American, you know, just the go, 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 yeah. nonstop, you know, like go until you drop, basically. And a lot of us are dropping is what it comes down to. Yeah. We mm-hmm. have to we have to shift this because there's too much autoimmune disease, there's too much thyroid dysfunction and a yep. million other things, depression, anxiety. Our bodies are crying out for us to listen. Yeah. And to honor ourselves and to take accountability for ourselves. It's not anybody else's, you know, job. It's yours. Yes. And there's a great quote to piggyback off of that really quickly is, um, I forget, I forget who told me this, but it was, we are hired for our talent and not our stamina. And that is a great mindset when you are, it's nearing eight o'clock and you're like, why am I still here? I'm not even doing anything productive. Mm-hmm. Go right. higher for our talent, not our stamina. That is excellent. Yeah, I love that. Mm-hmm. Well, thank you so much for being here with us today, Carly. This has been such an awesome conversation. For our listeners, you can learn more about Carly at carlysweet.com, um, including her free self care toolkit. You can sign up for that there and uh, check out more uh, about her book, Boundaries with Soul. We'll include the links to all of that in our show notes. Thank you all for joining us for another episode of Thyroid Refresh TV, where we give you the inspiration and information you need to live thyroid healthy. To receive your free Thyroid Thrivers grocery guide, you can visit us at thyroidrefresh.com. And to learn more about Thyroid 30, our revolutionary 30-day wellness adventure, go to thyroidrefresh.com slash thyroid30. You do have the power to heal and we have the tools. And if you've enjoyed this podcast and would like to help us continue inspiring and empowering thyroid patients worldwide, please leave us a review on iTunes. It would make our day. You are what makes this community the amazing resource it is. And we so appreciate your listenership and your support. We're Dana and Jenny wishing you the very best of health. See you next time. Bye, guys. Bye. Thanks, Carly. Thanks, Carly.